check one, two, testing my audio. I had a little bit of a just mini disaster as I tripped over the HDMI cable connected to my camera and uh, I had to go find another HDMI cable. But amazingly, I'm barely late. So uh, I will be starting in just about a minute and a half. Let me know how my audio is. Thank you very much. Hello, welcome to The Coding Train. It's a kind of a miracle that I am here for you on camera, slightly off to the side, because I actually had no idea what I would look like when I pressed the button to switch to this camera right here to broadcast and live stream this. Maybe if I move over this way, um, because I tripped over, I knocked the tripod over, the cables went flying, when the HDMI cables got bent. I had already pressed start to the music. Actually, no, that was right before I pressed start. I went and got another cable. Then I pressed start. Anyway, it was like a mad rush in the last five minutes to get started here. But I'm looking over and the lighting seems fine. I'm assuming people can hear me. Uh, I see audio coming through and I'm sitting here. I wore a, a, a slightly nicer shirt than I usually do on a Saturday for you today. <laughs> I hope you appreciate that. You don't need to appreciate that. Uh, 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 I appreciate you. I should be the one appreciating you. Um, I do want to maybe make some adjustments here, but before I do any of that, I'm really excited to tell you about a new sponsor I have for the Coding Train live streams. And so I want to very quickly, let's see if I can press the right buttons to make this happen. I'm going to click over here. Ah, and I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor of the Coding Train Curiosity Stream. So launched by media visionary John Hendricks, who founded the Discovery Channel, you know, back when it was actually good. Um, you know, there's a lot of reality TV on there now. Uh, Curiosity Stream is the award-winning destination for documentary films and TV shows covering every topic from space exploration to adventure to the secret lives of wild animals. So you can sign up. See that link that's above me there? CuriosityStream.com slash Coding Train. Uh, if you sign up at that link, uh, hopefully somebody can post it into the chat. Um, it's also in the video's description. You'll get a 26% discount on the annual HD plan. It's $14.79 for the entire year, which is kind of mind-blowing to me. I know money means a different thing to different people all over the world, but I was thinking about how much I spend on just renting a movie from time to time. Um, and so uh, um, there's a, just a huge library of stuff. You will also get access to the streaming video service Nebula that I've talked about on several occasions here on The Coding Train. Um, you can also see Coding Train videos on Nebula, a lot of other original content and uh, from um, YouTube creators um, when you sign up for Curiosity Stream using the link that's above me um, and hopefully by now it's gotten posted to the chat and I see that Nico thank you for posting to the chat so um, back to here so I'll come back and um, we'll, we'll maybe look at a couple interesting recommendations I have for you I was watching last night a documentary on the on moose and there's like moose I think it's called moose on curiosity streams with my kids because we love to watch nature shows a little cute little babies they were so wonderful <laughs> um, anyway it really helps me out if you consider signing up so 
Um, I what am I going to do today? Today is a day of coding. That's ostensibly what I do. Um, and I want to open today with looking at some of the recent video tutorials. And by the way, my glasses are incredibly dirty. I can barely see a thing. Is there any way that I could possibly clean them? <laughs> Maybe before I start live streaming. For all I know, there's like a giant piece of like uh, jelly on my face. I was having a peanut butter and jelly crepe earlier. Is that a weird thing to announce on live? YouTube. <clears throat> In any case, um, I'm a little bit discombobulated, even a little bit more so than I usually am. I am enjoying looking at the chat. I'm going to move this document out of the way uh, which, uh, and go over here. And am I in the right Discord channel? I am. Oh, have you joined the Coding Train Discord? <laughs> Let's see if I can open that up. Um, oh, uh, good. You're not seeing it because I want you to see it in a second. Um, I'm going to go over to here. Um, this is um, where the Coding Train community uh, hangs out um, during the times in between my live streams. <laughs> Uh, there's a wonderful community of folks there. We've added some new moderators recently. Thank you to everyone who's come aboard to help moderate the Discord. Um, but mostly the reason why I mention it is as I'm doing stuff today on the live stream, various things that I might be coding or talking about, I will post links to them. So I mean, obviously I could post them to the YouTube chat. Maybe that would be more efficient, but I don't have easy access to that. And I like to kind of keep things... Um, the YouTube chat could disappear and who knows. So I like to post things to this Discord channel as I'm going. So um, I would love for you to join. You can go to thecodingtrain.com slash Discord. Or I have this button here. When I press it, it puts an invite to the Discord in the chat. I love my Elgato stream deck. It's over here. It's really cool. I'm <laughs> looking at you, Elgato. Um, <clears throat> let's see. What else do I want to say? So I'll be here till about three o'clock. As uh, some of you who might have watched some of my other recent live streams, um, Saturdays, uh, one of these days I should really like not live stream and do the baking class with my kids. <laughs> but my kids are taking a Zoom baking class. Today, I believe, is a pear tart. So at a, I, it, it goes between one and three. They're not completely unsupervised in the kitchen. There's another adult present. <laughs> Uh, making sure, you know, nothing lights on fire. They're, you know, they're nine and 12, so they can handle themselves. It's not like there's a you know, two-year-old turning the oven on anymore. It's, uh, it's, used, that didn't ha happen. If it did, I, I apologize to all the other two-year-olds. Who am I even talking to anymore? Sometimes it's very hard to just keep speaking words continuously when you're in a room by yourself in an attic, really, staring at a camera. I do see the outside world. There's a nice window over there, and I see Brooklyn. I see little rooftops of buildings, and it looks like the sun is coming out. Uh, the snow is sort of melting, although we're supposed to get four inches of snow tomorrow. What was I was, I, but but I'm going to jump right in because time is a wasting, and I have a limited amount of time. So this spring, if you've been following me recently, and I'm I'm you know a little bit crawling through the mud here and making progress, although I am making progress. This spring, from now until probably through the summer, really, but at least until uh, April or May. It's not the spring yet. It's clearly the winter if you look outside of New York City. But my focus is the nature of code. So let me uh, say a few words about that. Uh, first of all, you can check out um, the Nature of Code book. Um, I'm not trying to sell you something here. This is actually a, um, you know, there are ways that you can support the project if you feel so inclined, but this is a uh, an open source uh, book project with uh, 10 chapters about creative coding and physics simulation um, that um, I really should figure out what, I always wanna say that I published in, somebody fact check me on this, I think, I think I published this in 2012. That's my guess right now. <laughs> I had to guess. Um, but I haven't, and, and I've been talking about publishing a second edition of it probably for like the last four or five years. <laughs> so you can see how well this is going. Um, but I am really trying to double down on that, make that my sole focus. I'm teaching a course at NYU right now called, guess what? Drum roll, The Nature of Code. Um, and I'm going to go over here and I'm, one of the things that I'm really excited about that I figured out how to do is we started using um, at NYU, well, we, NYU is now using a learning management system. Uh, it's called Brightspace. I don't know if any of you use it um, for your schools or if you are involved with schools, but I, I really want not wanting to use learning management systems. 
because I don't want the content that I work, the educational content that I work on to be locked into a proprietary system. Um, at the same time, uh, students' privacy is a big concern. Um, there's often a lot of, you know, postings and chatter and sort of administrative stuff that goes along with running a course that I don't want to be in an open platform. So what I finally figured out how to do was keep all of my notes for each week. So if I go here, I'm just gonna to go to module one vectors, keep them all as in an open source repo. This is basically the assignment, the videos and uh, reading material. Some of this right now, actually, unfortunately, if you click on this PDF, maybe I can remedy this is only, some of the draft PDFs I've only made available in Google Drive if you have certain permissions, but I, I don't mind sharing those more broadly. But the point of what I'm saying is I have figured out how I can embed this markdown file into Brightspace. So the students can, and the reason why I mentioned this is I would love for any of you who are out there to follow along with this material. Feel free to complete the assignments yourself. I'm gonna show you where you can share them on the Coding Train website. Um, I'm, I'm gonna show you a bunch that some people have unknowingly done. I mean, they, they know that they did them. Maybe it's, un, they don't know that they did them as part of like this course. And, um, um, I would like, um, and I would love your contributions. So for example, something that's really missing here on my notes are su uh, su additional supplemental readings and material that might not be authored by me. Um, in particular, um, you know, I tend to, uh, most of the resources that I've researched and created with Nature of Code come from a kind of Western American white male perspective. And, you know, I try to be mindful of sharing um, diverse artists, especially uh, black indigenous people of color. And so if you have artists and references that you think would be relevant, you know, I don't want each one of these pages to be, you, you know, thousands of links long, but I do want to curate and add and continue to update it. So if you would like to continue, the issues are open, the pull continue, if you'd like to contribute, the issues are open, the pull requests are open, I encourage you. You can see right now, um, there's nothing as of module three. Obviously the material for the modules exists on the internet and other places, but I'm slowly putting them together. You know, I, I'm not asking anyone to do my work for me, but if you want to make a little fun project, see if you could create one of these readme files for one of the later weeks based on all of the things that's in different places on the internet. You could certainly do that and I would uh, happily review it. Um, this is my main focus right here. So the updating the book is going along with this. That's still on a little bit of hold. I don't really have time to look at the book text too much, but what's really happening live in motion, going, 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 is the new videos. So while I know it's disappointing to some folks that these coding challenges are few and far between, I will, I'm excited to say that there's a couple that have been recorded that will come out um, as part of coding challenges. Um, my focus has been on um, the Nature of Code uh, playlist. And what you'll see here is this most recently, there are now four videos that go along with chapter three. Angles in motion, angular motion, angles and vectors, polar coordinates. I see that um, Kuntal in the chat is asking for these links. So, thank you for asking. <laughs> um, Kuntal, I am going to show you how I share links. Uh, mm, that's very hot. And Stieg is asking a question about the platform for publishing the book. So I'm happy to discuss that for a little bit. I do have a tendency to like take up a half an hour when I start discussing that, but let me see if I can return to that in one second. So let me just offer some of these links. Um, I'm gonna put them here in Discord. So remember this is in the live, uh, I can just zoom in on this. In Discord, there is a category called live. Um, I try to post updates to my schedule here in schedule um, and links. Um, or where I'll post links of things that I'm doing. So here is that repo. Uh, here is the Nature of Code book. And one more link I wanna make sure I share is this page that has all of the videos so far. Uh, and then um, I think, let's see if this comes up. Yeah, I can usually find it. It's that the playlist on YouTube uh, is also the nature of code too. And I have, uh, you, every, some of you who have watched my recent live streams know that I, I feel a great amount of pain when I look at this page. <laughs> I just like, my soul aches for the features that YouTube implemented and took away. <laughs> oh, 
I almost, I mean, I'm not going to move off of YouTube, but boy, if, um, Certainly, it's not helping me feel. You know, I have lots of mixed feelings about YouTube as a platform. Uh, there's the benefits for me right now outweigh the 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 deficits, <laughs> um, but the lack of the learning playlist uh, structure that they had implemented is really it really makes me sad. If anybody from YouTube is watching this, thank you for listening to me. <laughs> and by the way, everybody that I've worked with at YouTube is absolutely lovely and has taken feedback graciously and works really hard. So it's not a criticism. These are big, complicated software systems people are working on with a lot of different incentives so i don't mean that as a criticism i'm just i'm just sad <laughs> a little bit sad i'm gonna read some random numbers that makes me happy <laughs> what was i doing ah i'm pasting this link in here all right so that's the link to that particular playlist i will tell you that chapter three um if we're looking at chapter three there's actually a 2.6 video that i made back in march like basically the day before uh well it wasn't you know there's no exact date to really pinpoint when the pandemic hit, but at least it was kind of the day before everything shut down in New York City. I mean, I never got to releasing it. It's also like, it was kind of a mess, that video. So there's a 2.6 coming. I think I should release it. Um, and then uh, 3. 3. 5, 6, 7, and 8, there's four more videos for chapter three, as well as two coding challenges. So there's a lot coming. It's all been recorded, just putting it together, waiting to publish it. Um... All right, I'm looking at the chat and Juan says, I got the physical nature of code book for my birthday last year and it was a great gift. Juan, I'm so happy to hear that. Um, I don't know if I could ever, I mean, it's the, far be it for me to assume that me signing anybody's book is something anybody actually wants, but if I could ever meet you in person someday and you have your book with you, I would be glad to write you a nice little note and hopefully I can remember and say, I remember when you wrote about this on chat on the YouTube live stream. Um, okay. So the first thing that I wanted to do today um, is um, just look at some things that people um, just remind you about the community contribution system that I have, which by the way, I have some, I have some kind of secret plans. Nobody knows about this. Not even some of the people. I really need to fill some people in. Um, um, there's been a, uh, the website, the coding community website is a community driven project. Um, and I have some plans for it. So I, I'll be in touch with those of you who spend a lot of time helping to maintain the website. Um, but what I wanted to remind you is right now for every single video, and don't worry too much about, am I posting this in the right place? Just share what you're making. If you go to any particular video uh, page, first of all, the code is there. This is really important. And uh, sometimes there'll be more than one example with each video. So you can see web editor. Um, you can just, you know, if I'm looking at web editor and I just click, right here on this one, and then run the sketch. This is a particular sketch that I demonstrate in the video and the code that goes along with it. So I wanted to make sure everyone's aware of that. Um, and then I also want to just highlight this community contribution section. So if you make a sketch, oh, actually, sorry. If you make anything, honestly, it could be you made a sweater. <laughs> you drew, you painted a picture. I. It doesn't have to be a code contribution, a P5. If you, if you um, are, are uh, putting something out there and you want to share it with me and the community, this is the place to do it. It's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, requires a little bit of comfort with GitHub, a little bit of willingness to like put yourself out there. Um, we, I hope that I and the rest of the folks who are helping to manage the repo are friendly and welcoming and inclusive. So don't worry, you can't do it wrong. It's a learning opportunity for all of us to participate in these systems. But um, you can uh, look at this guide uh, for how to add your sketch. I also have a little video that I think is still up to date and some information about how to do it. Um, and then I'll, let me go and find one where there's one actually there. So for example, here we go. Uh, Lemur Daniel. Great name, Daniel. Wow, what an excellent name you've got there. This coffee is very hot. I've burnt my tongue on it at least three times while streaming. And I'm now trying to drink it very slowly. <laughs> Talk amongst yourself. delicious. So sometimes I will uh, pick a contribution across everything and show it, but I thought I wanted to really kind of want to like highlight these videos to make sure people are aware they exist and I'm getting your feedback and that sort of stuff. So let me click here on uh, Fortune Wheels and let's take a look at, oh cool, 
So this is definitely based on one of the examples I remember referring to in making where you kind of have this wheel. And I, by the way, this comes from my example is a very awkward um, kind of like drag and release um, interaction code. Um, there's probably a much more elegant, thoughtful way of maybe doing a running average over time of how you're moving the arrow so that when you release, I think I'm just taking like the last two frames of the, of the draw loop and looking at where the arrow is and then seeing how far apart they are and kind of applying that as a force. But you can see this is cool. Wheels for sector count 10 audio off. So, oh, oh my goodness. This is wild. Sector count, oh, whoa. I had no idea. I looked at this earlier, audio. Can you hear the audio? I think you can. That's pretty cool. Great work, uh, Daniel, and excellent name. <laughs> By the way, I just want to make it clear. <laughs> You're quite allowed to publish a community contribution to the website, even if your name isn't Daniel. <laughs> just putting that out there. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so now let's see if we have any more. I think they might all be from Lemur Daniel. Uh, Angular Motion, none yet. You could be the first. Um... Angles and vectors. Oh, we've got two from Lemur Daniel. Thank you, Lemur Daniel. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at these quickly. Asteroid game, vector thrust. Um, whoa, cool. Um, ah, we're... Oh, this is fun. So this is like... So one of the things the videos talks about is how to um, use a, the angle of a vector to apply a velocity or a force, as well as how to um, have an object you're drawing like this ship here point in the direction of motion. So those are some of the things I'm covering in the videos. Cursor control, oh, that's cool. Oh, wait a second, this is like a steering behavior. Like basically I can, oh my God. I, I don't know why I've never thought of this. Is this a thing that other asteroid games do? Like I'm able to like apply the force um, by just using the mouse cursor. Is it like stronger the further away I go? Whoops. Kind of looks like it is. Like if I'm really close. Yeah, it is. It's proportional. That's wild. Great work. Ah, oh, this is a great train whistle for this one. All right, this is great. Very impressed. Um, now, um, let me look at um, vector. Was that what I was looking at? Vector thrust or asteroid game? I think I was looking at asteroid game. Oh, this is just... Oh, cool. So one of the things I love about this is also like showing the vectors. So, you know, I could do a better job of this. Um, oh, thank you. Abe is sharing something with me, um, which I will uh, pull up in a second. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that I could do a better job of is having some of the examples be uh, self-documenting or self-illustrative. That's a way to say it. Um, like by including drawing the vectors that are part of how it works can really help people understand and see. Um, I, so the red vector is the current velocity, I would assume, and the uh, white vector is the force that's being applied. Thrust, instant, progressive. I don't even. Oh, that's interesting. Friction, on, off, testing. Oh, this is wild. Look at this. That is so cool. I mean, it's not just annotating a system and diagramming out what all the pieces are and notating the angles and the lengths. This is this is really cool to see. Thank you for this. So I hope you all check that check out these projects. And hopefully, um, if you're like trying to figure out how to make something like this yourself, uh, the video tutorial will help you. Um, let's see what else do I got. Three point four. I just published this morning, so I don't think there are any community contributions. Um, but I will point out to you that if you've ever wondered how to kind of do things like this, like think about the asteroids game, this is actually um, drawing a circle using polar coordinates and then moving every point along that surf, um, offsetting all the points along the perimeter of a circle uh, randomly, uh, closer or further to the center and then uh, putting it together as a polygon. So. Um, Lots of fun stuff here that you're welcome to do. So actually, one of the things that I was, this is a little bit backwards, but the kind of first thing that I want to do today um, is for, and let's see if I can find it. 
So um, in the coding train sketches, if you ever want to like figure out what's coming up in future videos, <laughs> you can probably just go to the coding train sketches because you can see all of these things. Like I'm working on a self-avoiding walk. I actually recorded a video, but it was, uh, I, I think I have to throw away the footage, unfortunately. <laughs> should have like a second channel with like all just rough blooper cuts of everything. By the way, though, if you want to join Coding Training as a member, um, some of my recording sessions I broadcast to have people tuning in and give feedback. And that's one of the benefits of joining as a member, which is somewhere, a button somewhere on your YouTube page. Um, so, but, ah, Soft Pendulum, Spring. I'm looking for recently, I recorded a video tutorial about a pendulum, January 20th. 2021, this seems right, which is this, aha. Uh -huh. And so one of the examples in the video um, that I mentioned, oh, 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 I, want, I meant to share Abe's sketch as well, but let me finish this thought. Um, one of the um, exam, one of the prompts that I mentioned in the video is what if you had an array of these pendulums kind of like all swinging together? And so often what I'm doing now with these videos is when I talk through an example and then give an assignment prompt, I'll kind of like show the results of that assignment and then link to the example. And so I thought like it's a good thing for me to actually like code some of these up during, often I just do it like I have, I have 15 minutes here. I need to create this extra example for the video, but I, I would like to do a lot of these during the live streams. So that's kind of like a little extra coding challenge today bonus um, where I'm going to attempt to make a version of this with like more pencil. It's a little bit backwards because I haven't even released the video that explains this code yet. So I don't know. You may make a mental note. Go back to watch that video when it comes out. Come back and watch this later. Who knows? Just enjoy this right now. Go and do something else right now. I have no idea. But that's what I'm going to work on. While I'm getting set up, um, let me see if I can find um, Abe's sketch. I'm always hesitant to open up uh, Discord channels without uh, permission. Um, and I'm going to open this one up. Oh, my goodness. Oh, right. This is the stuff that Abe and Simon are working on together also, I believe. So you'll have to tell me... Um, uh, the sketch that I'm about to show, whether this was one of your collaborations or not, but this is really fun. So I'm excited to show this to you. Here it comes. All right, this this deserves a nice little uh, uh, snare drum. All right, everybody? We're going to see some exciting spinny, springy, thingy mabobbers. <laughs> cool. So this is, a, by the way, I it's not a big deal. And uh, I like to look at the sketches um, at the, the with the full view because it keeps... Um, the most chaotic thing ever. It keeps a link to the code and the, uh, noting that it's part of P5 here on the top. But look at this. So this is coming. I have a video about um, doing like these springy things. So this is actually an example from one of the videos, I believe. Yeah, this is the, just this like soft stringy thing is uh, the coding challenge that I do pretty, pretty recently. And then um, angles and rotation and more springy stuff. Um, cool. I'm going to just put on a little music. Oh, thank you for this, Abe. Uh, great job. Um, and um, I am just going to uh, put on a little music for a second while I get myself um, set up. So I, I, I'm, I'm looking for, I need, I need a pendulum class for what I want to do. I'm noticing like there's some things that I want to update with this example, but um, I will do that right now. So let me save this um, and I'm going to call this the video. The pendulum video is going to be coding challenge 159. Coding challenge 159 pendulum um, exercise. So, and I think I can turn the music down. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to kind of look at this for a second to figure out if I want to adjust anything 
um, before I start to make multiple pendulums. Um, and we can see this is uh, the result of this code. And I can see a couple things I wanna do. Um, this always bugs me. I prefer to create an object with an X, Y rather than make a copy of a vector. Um, so that I'm going to do angular velocity, angular acceleration, this is all fine. Um, let me just look here and say sketch. Um, I think I can take out some of these comments just to like simplify. Um, this is, I'm gonna use some ES6 magic. P.go, that always has bothered me. So first of all, I also don't like, I mean, I, sh I can use a slightly shorter word like pendul. Um, and I also, I used to make my examples and maybe, I don't know why, where um, in this go function, I call update and display. So it's like one function to do all the steps. But I've recently, uh, I prefer not to do that in my examples. And I have found that I prefer to just actually explicitly call update and explicitly call uh, display. And I, I've been calling those functions show also because I think display is a, a render is another good word, but display I think is a keyword in some parts of JavaScript. Um, so let's make sure this still works. What did I break? Oh, I broke something. <laughs> no error. It completely broke. Oh, okay. Now I remember. Uh, so now I want this to be at uh, width divided by two um, and uh, zero. That's where the pendulum is. There we go. Okay. So in theory, what I'm looking to do, so actually the prompt that I give in the, um, so Wasim Akram, let me answer this question, asks, will this go, um, and Abe says, by the way, that was a collaboration um, with Simon. So one of the things that, uh, that I have the capability to do is um, in the members Discord channel, uh, the messages there I can bring up on the screen. So this is from Abe, who uh, mentioned that this was a collaboration with Simon. Okay, um, so Wasim's question is a really good one. <laughs> will this coding challenge, uh, will this coding challenge be available as a separate video in the future? So I don't, it's funny, I, I always, it always bugged me how I had live streams that then got like edited and repurposed as separate videos. And then during my live streams, I started really thinking about the editing and I would stop and start. And it just, I don't know, it felt, something about it didn't feel like the way I wanted to do things. <laughs> and so I, right now, I've completely separated these things. Now, that experience is still available because when I record a video that I know is going to be edited, um, um, that those, th those are streamed for members so people can join and kind of like tune in. But there's a lot of stopping and starting and me just like thinking and then I uh, like go for a walk and take a break and come back. So um, whereas the live streams now are just live streams. They are what they are. They have a start, a middle, an end. They're a mess. They're great. They're terrible. Who knows? Uh, they're archived. In theory, I would like to time code them and have good solid descriptions and chapterize and all that kind of stuff. So this will always be available but I'm no longer editing out stuff. Now, I maybe I should go back to that other way. I don't know. So at least for right now, that's what I'm trying. Um, but uh, to answer your, what you might've been asking is the how to code a single pendulum. I recorded a coding challenge of that, which is currently being edited and hopefully will come out soon. And it can't come out until I finish this piece of it that I want to include at the end. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll include a clip of me coding it or something so that people can understand how these things tie together. But there you go. Um, all right. Cube video. People are saying they like the cube video. I got to return to that <sighs> Rubik's Cube stuff. I always do keep a Rubik's Cube nearby. When all else fails, I either can try to solve it or um, read random numbers. I wonder if there's, some, there must be some uh, Rubik's Cube documentaries on CuriosityStream, by the way. My bet, I should take a look for that. Um, all right, now. So what I was saying is the prompt is actually to, um, if I can just zoom in here for a second, is to fill uh, pendulums across the top and across the sides and the bottom. So let me, um, let me see if, um, 
let me see if I can just start with the top. And, and, and Steinov is saying, would be cool if you edit recording of live stream, have some transition between clips. Yeah, that's what I used to do. <laughs> but I also would love to have like highlight videos, blooper videos, but uh, right now there's enough work for, I mean, the, the, the main video editor that I work with is Mathieu, um, who, who um, I, I would be open to like having more content. I don't know. When I start my TikTok, I'll make 60 second little clips from my videos to post on TikTok. Never gonna happen. <laughs> Might happen next year. I have, a, uh, I have some plans for next year. We'll see if they come into fruition. All right, let's just start with um, making this an array. Just, I'm gonna start this way. Uh, and then, oh, but first of all, so actually before I do that, I just wanna save this as exercise OOP. So I think um, one of the exercise prompts is also just to make, in the coding challenge, I don't make it um, object oriented. Um, so now um, I wanna duplicate it and say pendulum exercise, um, I'm gonna say array. By the way, there's this wonderful video on YouTube that I used to refer to, which has like physical pendulums and somebody like using a board to like line them all up, twisting the board and letting it go. So they're all slightly offset from each other. And it's quite beautiful. Um, <clears throat> is my chat not scrolling here? It totally is not scrolling. There we go, I fixed that. Okay, um, so let's see here. I don't wanna sit in front of the code. So move this over a little bit. Let's change this to an array. Um, and let's make Let's, let's, let's make a variable called spacing. How much am I gonna space them out? Let me space them out by 20 pixels. And then um, I need to, what happening to my mouth? Uh, I need to say uh, the total number of pendulums is the width of the canvas divided by the spacing. And sometimes I want, I might wanna have one at the beginning and the end. So this could actually be plus one. Um, and I should make sure that's an integer value plus one. Then I'm gonna say let i equal zero, i is less than total, i plus plus. And then pendules index i. And then I need a separate x position for each one. Um, and that x position should be i times the spacing. And then I should just here, I can say four, I'm sitting in an awkward way today. Let every pendulum of the pendulums <laughs> uh, update and show. Let's see what happens here. There we go. So this is what I was looking to do, but I need to, I wanna make this more interesting uh, visually, visually uh, dynamic. So there's a few things. One important thing here is I feel like whatever I do, I want, I mean, color is maybe something I wanna think about here, but right now I'm just gonna at a minimum give the pendulums alpha so that, um, and of course now you're th probably thinking about a Newton's cradle and having them bang into each other. <laughs> that's another That's another project for another time, not what I'm doing today. Uh, I think, oh, this is bugging me how much little space I have. Um, let's go to, um, let's, let's space them out a bit more and also have them be not as tall. Um, I think I should make this a square for what I'm trying to do. So let's make it 600 by 600. Okay, so this is more along the lines of what I was expecting to see and want to see. Um, I guess I, I this happened by accident, but the size of the pendulums must be 50. That's what I'm, sp I'm spreading them out by, R equals R. So I should probably, where do I create those pendulums? It might make sense. Oh, there are a hundred. What if I say spacing here? Oh, that's, no, that's the length. That's not the size of the, where is the size of, oh, ball radius is 48. It's arbitrary. Um, it's actually called a bob. Let's call it bob r. Um, let's um, put that in there because I think I would like that to be rel something relative to the spacing right now. Okay, wonderful. All right, now I'm just curious here, what is the first thing I should try in terms of having them, should I give them all a slightly different phase? 
should I give them all a slightly different, like what's the best way to make this slightly more dynamic? Um, so what are, what are some of the, the angle that they start on is pi divided by four. So what if I were to give them a starting angle? Yes, thank you. Uh, Harvard Natural Sciences Lecture Demonstrations. Thank you. Let's see if I Google that. Harvard Natural Sciences Lecture Demonstrations Pendulum. This is 100% um, the video that I was looking for. Let's just watch this for a second. Oh, they're different. Oh, le the heights are, the lengths are different. Does this have sound? Can't tell. If it has sound, I don't hear it. Now I hear it. Of course, now, now this leads me to want to do this with a, uh, the pendulums all, yeah, okay. Oh boy. Oh, I really want to make this. <laughs> uh, Wow, that's that's cool. So now now I'm sort of tempted to rethink. The problem is my exercise prompt. I, I probably should make the thing that I actually say in the video, but I also kind of want to make this uh, uh, later on. So let's let me go forward with what I was doing. But I'm realizing here that actually something that might be interesting to try is actually just have their uh, length be uh, different. So here I could say. I times like, you know, 10 plus I times 10. Like what would that do? Yeah, that's basically, I mean, it's not, <laughs> maybe I should say, you know, 50 plus I times 20 just to like make it a bit, uh, I don't have the auto refresh on. And is what I really want to see, like, many more of these. And the damping is a bit of a problem right now because they're all coming to a stop. So what if I, if I just take that out completely? That's pretty cool. Circular gradient on each circle to make them. So Steinov is having some great ideas in the chat about adding a gradient. Um, so this is what I'm really hoping other people will do. Um, I'm going to leave this fair. I might add some color to it just to make it pop a little bit more when it appears as an example. But I think thinking about gradients and trails and how to visualize this. Um, yeah, put them in the same position. It's exactly what I should do. Um, uh, distribute them vertically. Yeah. So th this was like a big, this is interesting, but obviously I'm totally now realizing that the way to make this more interesting is, would be not more interesting, but another way to think about this would be to have them all just right on top of each other. And it's much more about this vertical spacing so um, the vertical spacing is, uh, so I times spacing and the total is the height divided by spacing. I don't need the plus one. Um, and I might say spacing plus I times spacing. Let's see if I get this. If I remove the circles and flip them upside down, I have a laser show. I think I need some damping here. I should just have it be incredibly subtle. So like if I go back to this. All right, I think also 
Um, this, this will make this much more interesting if the spacing is much less. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, let's go all out with this, people. Uh, uh, window with window height. So whatever I do. Oh, and then this needs to be uh, width divided by two. Well, this is a cool result. <laughs> I'm not sure what I expected, um, but I'm pretty happy with it. I actually think I might want the damping to be even more now. It's so exact. I was kind of looking. I like this idea, by the way, of thinking about like how I'm drawing this. There's not really any reason necessarily to draw the circle. Um, and um, just to like add some color to it, I'm very color. Uh, I'm always have trouble picking colors, but I have this like coding train color palette. So let's try adding some of those. Um, I might have to record something to break into the video. <laughs> Look, you can try doing that today and see how that works. Um, what was I trying to? I'm in the wrong sketch. Um, let's go here to the sketch. Let's set this to be the background, but I'm gonna give the background some alpha and then let's have the lines be, should we try this like 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 blue or this pink maybe? Um, so let's go look at the pendulum lines and have them be this. And let's just make the stroke weight one. And now the, the question I think also becomes like, what's the starting angle that I want? Like what happens if, and, and maybe these colors are too similar here. I don't know how well this comes through over the, over YouTube, but um, what if I, by the way, this is totally like a cozy coding live stream now. <laughs> if you don't know about Aaron Davey on Twitch, if you like what I'm doing here, I feel like Aaron Davey does this all the time on Twitch, just sort of tries out weird stuff. Um, what if I make the starting angle 90 degrees? Yeah. And then I feel like this damping should actually be a bit more. That's too much, I think, because you can see it's, it's almost like a cloth or something. Let's give it another nine. By the way, it's crazy to think that I just started from this. <laughs> like this is the example. And just with like adding an array, basically, I now have this. Uh, what if you kept the circles and didn't draw the lines? I do like this idea. Let's try that. Um, okay, keep the circles, take out the lines. Let's give the circles also the same fill, the same um, fill. That is pretty crazy. Also, like now I'm sort of thinking well, I think maybe I want some, I want like a little bit of a higher contrast in the color just to be able to sort of visually see what's going on. Um, so um, let's go back to the pendulum and use a different color. Um, there's also no reason why I couldn't make this uh, like bigger, just curious. Um, and also, um, have the background alpha be a bit more extreme. Oh. 
It kind of has like a sonar ultrasound like quality to it for sure. It like a tree also has a tree like its quality to it. It also really feels like the circles are traveling. Like, oh, they're traveling down or traveling up, but they're not. They're individual ones going, it's a total illusion. Um, total illusion. Uh, I'm sure th those of you watching with a flair for design could think about all different ways to apply color and blending um, to this. Flip it upside down and you get the Wi-Fi symbol. <laughs> I, I am interested to see like what happens when I flip this upside down. Um, I guess that would be just a matter of maybe I should, um, is gravity a variable somewhere here? Yeah. So I'm gonna take this out and make gravity a global variable. This is an arbitrary constant, by the way, that really affects the behavior quite a bit. Like we could see, like if I make this much high, twice as high, or um, if I make this very low, wait, I'm not noticing a difference. I feel like this value should be playing a more significant role. Um, yeah, it is negative one times gravity. That's weird. Did I, do, did I not hit like running? Oh yeah, okay, I, I must not have restarted. So this is with a very, very low gravity, which is actually quite cool. <laughs> um, it's more, it's, it's like oozy, oozy wavy. Um, well, I really went off a little tangent here. Um, oh, but what I was trying to do, um, let's go back to the sketch is, if I do this and I make the gravity in the other direction, well, they're all falling up. So now I just need to put their origin at the bottom. So this is uh, upside down. Amber says, these would make a great screensaver. <laughs> yeah, that's my, I'm happy with that. All right, I think I just should stop. I have other things that I wanted to do today. I've already forgotten what was on my list. <laughs> um, and I, I should take, oh, Kim! Perfect timing. Kim, welcome to Coding Training Membership. With your membership, you will get your very own random pot, random number. And here we go. Uh, we're on page 247 of the Million Random Digits book. We're in row 12,330, and we are in column 51,000, uh, and the random number is 51,525. Thank you for joining. So Kim, make sure that you uh, link your Discord and YouTube accounts and you'll have access to some of the Coding Train uh, member stuff in the Discord. Um, all right, now, what if you have four of these pointing in different directions from the center? Yeah, okay, I have to stop. <laughs> like the point of this here, let me just save this and please go and make the stuff now. And all of these can go on the Coding Challenge page when I publish it, all your contributions. So I'm gonna go, um, let me just move back to here for a second because I don't know what I'm gonna open here in Discord uh, links. Um, this is, I am now posting um, the code to Discord. So go, go have fun, play with this, make something beautiful. You know, I love it, especially when you um, share it with me on Twitter. Um, you know, there is a coding train, uh, coding train Instagram that you can also tag um, that's managed by Sai, um, who's done a wonderful job kind of um, building the community there. Um, so, ah, so this is perfect timing because it's two o'clock. 
<laughs> and I could take a break. So one of the other things that I wanted to do today, which, uh, you know, admittedly may not be as exciting as this. And just to, just to like really um, finish this off here, let's make gravity 2.5. Just curious if I go here to full and do this, what we get. Wow. Um, um, what, um, <laughs> um, what I would like to do when I come back from my break is work on, I have a bunch of sort of ongoing projects <laughs> and I probably should, uh, I, and I leave, I have a bad habit of leaving things unfinished. So I probably should go back to some of these other ones, but I wanted to build a system where, um, we could have the discord bot keep track of people's random numbers because I am working on, this is not one of them, but these custom train whistles uh, with a pattern that's generated from the seed that it's your random number. So I'll come back and explain all of that. Um, first, I am going to just take a moment. Um, this will just take a few minutes to thank today's sponsor. And I'm going to play you a 30 second video from today's sponsor, which uh, is Curiosity Stream. And hopefully if the sound is not on during this video, please let me know in the chat. So, but I'm pretty sure it works. From the founder of Discovery Channel comes a new independent streaming service, Curiosity Stream, home of groundbreaking documentaries and award-winning original series. Follow your curiosity. This is Curiosity Stream. I'm back. So, um, as you might have heard me talk about before, I'm part of a group of educational creators that teamed up to build a platform where creators don't have to worry about demonetization or the YouTube algorithm, and it's called Nebula. And Nebula, I'm really excited to mention, is partnering with Curiosity Stream. So, Nebula here, I have up here. Um, here has a lot of wonderful um, channels. It's kind of like when I'm looking for something new to watch on YouTube, I'll often like sort of check out what's on um, Nebula. Um, I think I could probably find Coding Train somewhere on here. Um, but um, there are, one of the things, there's a lot of fun stuff, original content that's only available on Nebula. For example, Tom Scott's Money. Um, but you might be asking yourself, like, what does this have to do with Curiosity Stream? So Curiosity Stream loves edu educational creators and supporting more educational content. So Nebula and the creators that are involved with that project worked out a deal. So if you sign up for Curiosity Stream with that link, not only do you get Curiosity Stream, but you get Nebula for free. So it's a bundle. Um, it's not a trial. <laughs> You're going to have Nebula for free for as long as you are a Curiosity Stream member. So, and for a limited time, Curiosity Stream is offering 26% off um, its annual plan. So that's less than $15 a year for both, a year, by the way. I'm not saying $15 a month, a year, the entire year for both um, Curiosity Stream um, and Nebula. So here I can just open up the Curiosity Stream website. There are thousands of documentaries. Um, oh, I've got another member or something joining. My lights are blinking. Um, and uh, oh, look, I'm gonna let's click on the sneak peek of the library. You can see science, history, technology, nature. So I'm really partial to the nature one. I was mentioning I was watching this moose documentary with my kids. Um, and you know, a lot of us are staying inside these days. Hopefully that's gonna be changing more and more. We can go into the real nature, but you can watch some really amazing nature documentaries. You might as well be soothed by David Attenborough's voice. Watch Chris Hadfield, um, or just watch Tom Scott torture your favorite YouTubers on um, Nebula. Um, watch Chris Hadfield in the space station, that is. So click to the link above um, to get both Curiosity Stream and Nebula for 26% off. It's a great way to support the coding train and educational content as a whole for $14.79 per year. Um, right, that's 26% off. Again, that's for the entire year. So if you're already a Curiosity Stream uh, member, I'd love to hear any recommendations of things that I should watch because I've really been enjoying um, checking it out. I think um, Dr. Hannah Fry has a wonderful series about maths. Um, on Curiosity Stream that I also I just like watched a little bit of, but I'm excited to really um, dive into that as well. So um, so yeah, so I'm gonna take a short break. Um, you know, maybe you want to sign up right now. <laughs> I don't want to be so bold, um, but I'll be back in about three or four minutes, um, and I will continue with looking at some Discord bot and um, database stuff.
All right, I am back. Thank you again to Curiosity Stream. Um, check out curiositystream.com slash coding train. Okay, um, so what's up next? I've got about 45 minutes or so. And I think the timing is really quite perfect because if I'm not mistaken, we just had two new members join. So, welcome to um, Ronnie and Joseph. Thank you so much for boarding the coding train, where we make strange yellow upside down pendulum patterns. Yes. And for your membership, you will receive your very own random number. So <clears throat> rather than give you, um, Ronnie and Joseph, your random number right now, why don't we over-engineer an elaborate software system to keep track of a random number for you <laughs> in a very unnecessary way? So, um, what am I going to do here? Let's go to the YouTubes and see um, this YouTube channel called The Coding Train. And maybe under playlists, am I logged in? I'm subscribed. Who am I? I don't even know anymore. Um, I'm looking for, I think I'm just going to, my Discord bot tutorial series. So this is the most recent one. Welcome uh, back to... So this is uh, my most recent Discord bot tutorial. I do intend to make some follow-up um, videos um, that continue showing other aspects. I know working showing embeds and maybe, is, is that the way to say it, an embed? Because I embed something. I'm going to embed this onto the web page. I'm going to embed this nugget into my mind. But if there is a, if it's a noun, if it's a thing, like that's posted in Discord, it's not an embed, it's an embed, I think. <laughs> this is really what's important. <laughs> yeah, Prathamesh, uh, that's kind of genius. I wish I could share that more broadly. <laughs> just post a nice little meme <laughs> about how I uh, <laughs> just moved from one old side project onto a new one. But this one's really important because it has to do with something that I'm on a mission to do. And uh, you'll have to indulge me for a second. I don't know how many of you are new today, and I'm, I'm I'm looking for something that I would have shown like quite a while ago. Ah, here it is, perfect. Um, so um, what this is, and let me zoom in, is a uh, test run of. It's not this train whistle, but it is a blank wooden toy train whistle. Yes, this is what I'm talking about, people, with the coding trained. A train etched into it and then on the other side will is a random walk pattern um where and i actually i just have a new, i have a new idea now for the random walk pattern which i just realized nuno thank you so much Mwah. um for signing up for uh curiosity stream that's nice of you um so um the idea here is that every coding uh, I would like everyone in the world who wants one to be able to have one of these. I always say this because I don't like this idea of this sort of like exclusive thing, but to, you know, I've got to start somewhere. So right now, everyone who joins at the conductor's level and eventually hopefully the passenger's level, we'll see if I can get to that, um, will receive their own custom etched coding train train whistle with a random number pattern generated from their own custom random number. Got it? <laughs> So, so far I have done one, one aspect of this, which is that if I go to github.com slash coding train, and this needs a lot of work, by the way, so your contributions to this are welcome as well. But I think here under the random whistle uh, repository, um, and then if I click over here, we'll see it. This is a, it, you know, I don't know if we'll pull, if I want to pull this from the database or not, but we have a few few test sort of people in here. So if I go to Arnov, for example, puts the ran Arnov's random number there. I'm gonna uncheck the download, click the generate button. You know, no elegant, and now this is Arnov's uh, custom random walk pattern based on that random number. I don't know, maybe this isn't, and I'm still working on the, maybe I can see that I didn't, I don't remember all the details of how, I've got some point I've got to like finalize how it's generated. Um, so they all start in the same place. Also, I'm just using the built-in, um, the random number generator built into P5, which actually I think is fine. I might want to like put the random number generator in the code itself so we can know. 
exactly what it's using. Or <gasps> why am I even doing this? This is completely insane. This is what it has to be. A <laughs> new side project. So um, I think Violet shared with me a link to the uh, PDF of this book, but I should be using the sequence of random numbers in this book. What am I even thinking? So I need to first get, um, so I'll find that, we'll redo that. I'm not gonna do that right now. <laughs> that would be much more fun. Because <laughs> I gotta get this Discord thing started. Um, um, and so, yeah, and Stig, that's a great suggestion for Stig. Actually, Stig, if you have some design ideas, I know that's your one of your passions. Uh, I welcome them in sort of helping figure out how to make this um, work. I'm also working on um, uh, um, a, a, a video about a self-avoiding walk. I think I mentioned that. Let me just pull that up and, and run it. So that's like this. And conceivably, I could actually, we could do the self-avoiding walk as the random walk, um, which, you know, creates more distinctive geometry. Um, I think you, I can make this more um, obvious by going to sketch and making the step size like 10. So this is um, a self-avoiding walk. And when it gets stuck, it just backtracks to try to go a different direction. In theory, if I let this run for a very long time, it would uh, find a path that hits every point on the entire grid. Um, but, you know, the, the amount, it's doing a brute force algorithm. So I got to make a video about this. I love this uh, kind of pattern. Uh, this, um, I, 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 yeah. So this could also be a, a different option for if this sort of visually is not as compelling. Let's just try it like some of these other ones, like Hunter Parks. So we get. Right. I like this one. So this is what I was sort of more imagining as like a fractal, like brownie in motion quality to it. But the, but I but I need to be able to track this. I need a system by which I could keep track of who the members are, um, what their um, uh, random number is, and um, their random number image. And maybe the Discord bot itself should actually be like rendering this. I don't know. Who knows? Um, okay. <sighs> Um, oh, and thank you, um, Prathamesh uh, highlighted a question from the YouTube chat. Who does the illustration work for the channel? So um, those animations that you saw, the interstitial animations, those were made as a one-time thing and I am blanking on the person who made them. <laughs> so I can look that up and I can share that at Discord later. But the, the, the source material of that is all from Jason Hegland. And just to plug Jason's stuff, for a moment, because he really does amazing work, and he's working on um, um, this video uh, of the the train whistle is uh, from his shop um, out, and we can see we were trying different patterns, um, also as well to see what they look like. Um, but Jason Hegland, if you're interested in learning more about Jason, um, and I think um, you can find his website here. The coding train stuff is all here. Coding Train Expansion is like another project of all of these characters and everything you can find um, here with all sorts of ideas. But the thing that I was going to highlight for you is Jason also has his own shop this is, um, um, called Hi Hello There Co., um, which has lots of really fun, cool little like if you like the Coding Train stuff, you can get all these like really fun, similar style kind of um, shirts and shops and things. So, um, wow, this is really I hadn't looked at this recently. It's really, really nice. So um, Jason's amazing. Fred the Ghost. I, actually, one of the one of my dreams is to make a little coding children's book. Um, and I think Jason would be a great collaborator for that. So if anybody has any ideas or contacts or anything like that, um, let me know. All right, let's see. When am I going to have time for that? I don't know. All right, so, oh, this has been way too long of an explanation. Let's get to doing the Discord bot. So let me go to, and um, let's go to Coding Train Choo Choo Bot. Choo Choo Tweets, no. Discord bot Choo Choo. I think this is the current, nope. No, because this doesn't have the command handler. All right, let's go, it's weird. I, I should have prepared this in advance. <laughs> Strange. Uh, let's go to the coding train. Learning uh, Discord bot. Uh, by the way, uh, now I'm really all in. That's why I have a, a, 
project in the pipeline about redesigning the coding train website with the loss of the learning playlist on YouTube. I've given up and I'm just going to like really try to build a separate website that really helps organize all of the videos and content and code. So coming soon, um, more to come about that. But the website that exists right now is amazing. And it's been developed and designed by a variety of people that you would probably see here in the chat right now. Um, but I have some ideas for some upgrades. All right, so what I'm looking for, if I go to command handling um, and we go to view code. So this is the code, um, from that, this is the code that I, but I thought I had this, I'm, I'm totally confused. Let's also go to glitch. <laughs> and now as I spend the remaining 40 minutes just finding the code that I was gonna work with, Choo Choo Bot Discord. This is the actual bot. Oh, I think I never updated it to use the new command handler code. So let's do that. Dane, this is very dangerous what I'm about to do right now. But also, all sorts of API keys I'm sure are going to be revealed. So let me work on, oh, this is a little bit scary, but let's try this. Uh, thank you for indulging me and letting me do some like open source maintenance right now. Right? This is the, this is the repo that goes along with the videos and it does not have the latest code in it, which is strange. But do I have it uh, on the desktop, like in a folder called like Discord bot, choo choo tweets. Does anybody see it? No, let's, all right, let's just clone it. We're gonna bring this repo down. Um, I'm going to uh, shut off. So actually if somebody, I don't know if Kobe or David or anybody who's a mod in Discord right now, I guess I could do this myself, but there's that bot testing channel. If you could lock that channel down for a moment, just make it only like admins or mods can post it. Um, that would be good because I'm gonna run some tests in there in a moment. Um, and if nobody does that, then I will do that. Um, all right, so now I have a, what I'm, I'm actually going to turn off the bot. I, in theory, it'd be good if there was a better way to do this, but I, I'm just going to comment out the code right now. <laughs> this is my way of just saying, the bot is deployed and running on Glitch, which also I need to make a video about how to deploy it. All right, so um, the bot, now the bot is shut off. Uh, David said done, thank you. Um, so now I am going to uh, open this up in Visual Studio Code. So, you know, when, uh, whoops, no, let's actually go into the repo. <laughs> Boy, that pendulum stuff was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I've got about 35 minutes here before I've got to move on with my day. So let's see how things go. Um, so this is the Discord bot code, and this is .env sample. So if you haven't watched these tutorials, um, one of the things you need to do is have secret keys and tokens and codes to run your bot. So I need to, I'm going to save this as .env. So I'm going to have the real um, .env file. Then I'm going to go over to Discord and I'm going to click and copy the contents from this file into my local uh, repo, but I don't want you to see that. So I'm moving over to here and um, I'm doing copy. Again, it's not a coding train live stream. I'm gonna definitely gonna show these to you by accident at some point, but the fewer times I do that, the better. Um, and I'm now I copied, I'm going back to .env and I'm pasting. Um, and um, I'm now closing that and going back to index.js. Okay, so now I'm back uh, you, in this file now here are my secret keys for this particular Discord bot. And I'm gonna to try to run it right now. Ooh, weird. Oh, but this code is all, this is so weird. This code doesn't match. Or maybe it does, hold on. I'm so confused. This is like some really old code. All right, hold on. Let's also go back to Glitch and grab this. <laughs> a little bit more recent. Why not? I don't know what's going on. I obviously like haven't been keeping up with what I'm doing. All right, so now 
Uh, I've got the more slightly more recent code, but I'm going to get even more recent code in a second. Then I need to go and do npm install to install the node dependencies. Uh, and then let's try just running it. Okay. Now I'm going to go over to Discord. Where's my Discord? And um, I, I'm going to go here. And then I'm going to go to the bot testing channel, which is where? <laughs> okay, I'm so trouble now. So many channels. Uh, let me close this. Uh, stage. Oh, here it is. Bot testing. Okay. Uh, choo choo. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> ah, okay. Wait, we got an error. Missing permissions. What? I like the little hearts popping in, by the way. Well, this, this, I really meant to set this up before I started today. Missing permissions. Have I lost my mind and this is not the correct? So hold on. So let me quit this. Pretty sure this is the Discord bot. Is this not? Do I have multiple glitch projects and this is like an old one that I found that's not actually running? Beep, beep. Oh, oh, okay. It was David's mistake. <laughs> My bad. Removed messages from the bot too. Okay. Phew. Should be fixed. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. All right. All is right with the world. Um, so let me, let's try it again. Um, and now I'm going to go back to Discord and I'm going to try this again. <laughs> Same issue. Uh, <laughs> tick tock, tick tock. Let's see. Oh, I'm not running the bot anymore. So let's see. Maybe maybe I messed up. Oh, there we go. We're back. We're back in business. We're back. We're back, baby. Okay. Um, all right. So now then I can also say uh, GIF. And we'll get a GIF from uh, the coding train. And I can do things like GIF, um, uh, you know, uh, kitten. And I will also get it. So that's, these are the features that are in the Discord bot so far. Oh. I'm literally going to get as far as like getting set up to add some code and then I'm going to be done with the live stream. Uh, we'll see. Um, uh, uh, all right. So um, now what do I want to do? The next thing I want to do is go to the more recent code, which is here, and actually get um, the code that involves the command handler to work from there. So I'm going to go here, then I need to add um, um, a folder called commands. Commands, right? Is that what I do? And then I'm just updating the code from what I actually did in the tutorial, commands.js. Oh, and then this is, then I also need to make There's got to be a more efficient way for me to do this. Commands.js and a commands folder. Got it. Uh, so now I'm going to make a file called commands.js. Not that needs to be out in the root directory. Move. <laughs> Paste this code in. Then in here, in commands itself, I need choo-choo.js. And uh, what was the other one? gif.js, right? Uh, that's what the files I'm loading, choo-choo and gif. And then, you know, I can go here and get the choo-choo code, uh, which goes here. And by the way, all of this code is, I, I, you know, I go through it in lots of detail in the uh, video tutorials. So I don't understand why, where it went, but obviously it was somewhere and here it is. So I'm just recreating it. Um, and now let's just see what happens if I quit. 
and uh, run it again. And is it still uh, working? <laughs> oh, I'm lost. I'm lost. Where do I go? Discord. Uh, choo choo. Great. And GIF. Great. All right. So everything's still working. Uh, thank you, Code Guppy and Marianne. I'm keeping it up. Appreciate it. Very kind of you. Um, so now, next step. Let's create a branch called command a handler. I'm going to check out that branch. And this is new code from the command handler tutorial. And let's push this to the command handler branch. And I realize some of the stuff that I'm doing is going to be very unfamiliar to people who are in the audience right now. Hopefully just sort of seeing this process is helpful to you. Um, I, 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 my Git and GitHub videos could really use a refresher. Um, and now I'm, I'm just going to say um, updating the code. I should write something more thoughtful, but this is a note to myself. <laughs> I will just keep it short and sweet. Then you're all watching. I'm going to create this pull request. Um, and this, we can see everything that I changed here all of the new code and the changes. Um, um, I can merge this. Then I can just go back to uh, main and grab the code, uh, the merge code. And now for my grand finale, I'm gonna, I'm going to go back to um, Glitch, and I'm going to go to Tools, Import and Export, uh, Import from GitHub, and um, just go to here, and Import from GitHub, paste this in here. Let's see what happens. It's basically rebuilding the project with all the code from GitHub. So this is kind of an awkward way, awkward, highly manual way of deploying a project, but it's actually kind of working fairly well for me. Um, you can see there's some log messages where it's kind of booting up and installing Node and all of that. Let's wait for this to finish. So now the updated code is deployed to Glitch. Uh-oh. Ah, I messed something up. So I forgot that I need for it to work on Glitch, I need to have a start script. So I think this would be start, and it needs to be, uh, I would just say node index.js. Um, so I need to add that. I'm going to skip a few details here and just do, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do something really awful, but uh, I can't help it. I'm pushing to main, everybody. Look away, everybody look away. I'm not actually doing this. Look away, I'm not doing this. <laughs> okay. Uh, then I should be able to go back to glitch, go to tools, uh, import, import from GitHub and just say, okay, again. I, by the way, I have not, this is the only way, I have not been able to get it to work where I could just push to glitch from from terminal. I should be able to, but I just pushed to GitHub and then I just manually hit import on Glitch. And now, hopefully, yes, I think it is, oh, throw error, cannot find module node fetch. What have I like messed up here? Ugh, the dependencies are wrong. That's so weird. Hold on. So strange. What? What is going on? Okay. I don't know why that wasn't in my package.json. What did I do to like remove it? Adding node fetch. Everybody, look away again. Look away, turn off your computers. Avert your eyes. <laughs> Hide under your desks. 
<laughs> oh my god! Oh, this is terrible. All right, now <laughs> go back. <laughs> Do import again. Import from GitHub. By the way, <laughs> no, 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 no. This is very bad. I don't like seeing that big red message here. Don't, don't, don't do something bad to my bot. I don't think you can see it. I don't think the whole Git URL was uh, available to anybody. <laughs> if it was, somebody let me know. Could I use a GitHub action to automatically export to Glitch when, glitch when you push the main? Joseph, I, I hope so. Um, at, at, so I, you can do this with a lot of other, like with Heroku or Amazon or Netlify or Versal. Um, so I, I should get better at these kind of deployment systems. Aha! There we go. Beep, beep with a little sparkly hearty thingy. That means my bot is active and running on, um, hi code guppy, um, uh, is running on, um, <laughs> is running on glitch. 237 folks. We're making progress here. Welcome to what ACK coding is actually like. Oh, I'm gonna add a new feature to this piece of software I'm working on. But first I need to spend about an hour just to remember how I got it to run in the first place. And also realizing that I didn't update the code in this place and then I have to deploy and then I have to check this and I have to not reveal my secret API key on a live stream. Ooh. Welcome to software engineering, everyone. <clears throat> So Flow Striker is asking, why shouldn't you push to main directly? I'm sure some other folks probably can offer some helpful thoughts in the chat, and I would encourage you to do so. I, you know, I think there are everything, you know, context is key here. And um, I think there are scenarios where, um, you know, if this Discord bot were being used by millions of people around the world, and it was a collaboration that I was building with tens of other people or like lots of collaborators, um, I would want to have a system with checks and balances where you couldn't just automatically override the sort of main branch of a source code repo without running some tests, without having a code review, without deploying it to a test server. So in those, there are like that, in that context, um, you know, pushing directly to main would be a huge problem. So in my context of like, I'm keyboard smashing, talking on the internet, weirdo person, like making a bot that posts gifts to a, uh, to a Discord server that I own. <laughs> I'm happy to like bend the rules here, but um, you know, it's important also to try to like set up some good habits, but you don't want those hat over engineer those habits that they block you from your, you know, creative exploration. So it's a fine line. Where to find that balance? I definitely lean towards the side of just like keyboard smashing and experimental coding and, uh, you know, rele release early, release often kind of stuff in the sort of creative coding, art and expression, education context. But I do want to be mindful of good practices and people who really, um, uh, um, and I hear the pitter patter of little feet which means I think that pear tart might be ready soon. I'm going to have to go very soon. Uh, but Eric is writing, um, um, Eric wrote in the chat, the idea is to work on branches and commit only when you know it works. Um, I seem to know it works before committing, which is not the case. Is the pear tart ready? Oh yeah, I just need, I was going to finish at three, which is 20 minutes from now. Is that acceptable? Okay. All right, everybody, start your countdown clock. Let's see if I can get a little bit further here. <laughs> I love actually having a hard out and that my kids come and tell me to stop because as you know, I tend to just stream for the whole day and it, it, it doesn't help. Nobody's happy in the after two hours. Um, which language am I using to make this bot? This is in JavaScript um, with no Dutch AS. Okay, so where was I? I'm going to go back and comment this out. And I want to um, add a new feature. Well, there's no way I'm going to get very far with this right now. So let's at least add a command. Um, and we'll, I'll be working on this more outside of the live stream with some contributions and then maybe make a video about it. But let me add a command. 
So the way I do that is by creating a new file. I'm going to call it a number.js. Maybe I should call that random number. I don't know. Um, let's just get the choo-choo one as a good starting point. Um, and so if this message comes in, I'm just going to say, um, I'm going to reply back with, got, uh, I see you. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to, I just want to make sure the new command works. And then in the commands folder, I need to add uh, another variable called number, where I import number.js, and then that is also a command. So that should be good. Then I just want to redeploy, uh, not redeploy, sorry, I just want to run the bot. And uh, test it. So choo choo. And number, oops, number. I see you. Okay, great. Excellent. So now the question is, should the Discord bot, oh, there's a lot of shouting going on downstairs. Should should the Discord bot um, offer, set the, let's, let's make it so that you can set the random number for yourself. So, um, so just as a quick feature, um, just to add a little bit more here. So the arguments come in um, so console log, let's see. All right. So let's just, I, I, again, I'm going to have to be more thoughtful about this. Let's just say if, oh yeah, let's just say if there's an argument, we'll just, it, um, I'm just going to use one argument. So, um, if args is greater than args dot length is greater than zero and args index zero, um, I need I need to do a regular expression real quick. So um, um, I think I can do like backslash D plus test um, one, two, three is true. Uh, it's also true. So it needs to be the full thing. So this needs to be this regular expression. <laughs> I'm, I'm skipping around to get, kind of get going here. Uh, there we go. Okay, so this is my regular expression to check to make sure it's a digit. And um, if there is an argument and that argument is a, a, num a valid number, uh, then uh, we're going to say, I set your, I set your uh, number to Args zero. No, oh, that doesn't go there. Otherwise, I'm going to say uh, I need a number. Why I, should, I shouldn't have the bot be saying I. Oh my goodness, Muhammad is upgrading their membership. <laughs> I think Muhammad. Um, I um, I'm going to say number number set to Please provide, please provide a valid whole number. So th this is now what I want basically is to test to see, did I get a number or not? So let's uh, rerun the bot. Ooh, what, what kind of error happened there? Commands command is not a function. Oh, it breaks if there's not a command. That's interesting. I should definitely need some error handling there. Uh, and there's an error message. Uh, I guess I need another parentheses there. So now I should be able to say uh, number, hello, please provide a valid whole number. Number one, two, three, four, five. Number set to one, two, three, four, five. Awesome. So you can see though, this is good. I've got a feature going here. <laughs> I wanted to do a, so now I'm gonna try to set up a, a MongoDB. Oh. oh, no chance I have time to do this. Um, what's a good way to wrap up in the next 15 minutes? Well, let's get started. I'm going to get started on it. Um, now everyone tells me the last time I did something like this, I was told I should be using mongoose, but I have no idea what that is. So I'm going to look up MongoDB Atlas. 
which I believe is, um, I, previously I've made video tutorials on how to do this with Firebase. Um, but recently I was playing around with MongoDB Atlas and I kind of liked it, which is their like cloud service. Now, I think I might've already created an account with my, so I'm just gonna try to like, I'm gonna move off here and try to like log in with my account for a second. Oh. Oh, password manager. So hold on a second. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Number of times I do this while I'm live streaming um, is insane. really have this as like a favorite or something. Here we go. Show in large type. Somebody told me I should mute myself when I'm typing in my passwords because you could figure it out from audio. So I'm gonna do that for a second. Back to being unmuted. All right. Yeah. Oh, right. I've shown this because this is what I'm using for the other side project <laughs> that I failed to keep going. Uh, the Forrest Gump 500 project. I would really love some contributions and help with that because I feel like... Um, um, so, but... We'll see. Uh... Uh, G. Joe, G. Joe uh, says, I think that if someone knows your password from the audio, they 100% deserve it. I kind of agree. I also have two factors. So what's it really going to do for you? So I think what I need to create is um, um, uh, Solar Liner is saying, I'm just curious about this comment. Um, you should talk about deploying with Docker too. A Docker compose.yml file along with a simple server would solve all your deployment problems. Okay, I'm interested in this. Tell me more. Tell me more about solving all of my deployment problems. I don't really know very much about Docker, so that would be really helpful and awesome. Uh, all right. Um, so what I need to do here is create... This is like the Gump 500 database. How do I make a new one? Create a new cluster? No, I'm in a cluster. This is definitely a cluster. What? Gump 500, how do I make, what is Gump 500? Is that a like, um, if I go here, project. I want a new project, right? Random. Uh, what should I call this? Uh, I'll just call it random numbers. Okay, next. Uh, I'm not, I will add some other people later maybe. I'm the owner, create the project. Then the idea here is that, do I need to build a cluster? <laughs> I need a cluster? <laughs> okay. Or do I do database, data lake? What's a lake? There's a lake with data in it? <laughs> do I click build? Does anybody know? <laughs> Let's create the cluster. Ah, ooh, ooh, no, 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 no. Wait. Free, free, free. Yes, yes, yes. For learning MongoDB or small applications. Yes. Okay. Um, I guess I don't need to do, I need to do another one? I'm so confused. Um, AWS. I do have... This looks good, fine. Okay, connect. I got 10 minutes. I think I actually could do this because to be honest, I'm, I'm um, this is gonna be skipping some steps, but just to get a little further here, um, if I go to the Gump 500 project, which is a Twitter bot that I am working with MongoDB is, uh, I kind of have the code for all of that here, so I can just grab this code, but let's, um, 
So, okay. So I think I need to now, um, I'm, I think I need to click on this connect button and this connect button is maybe going to give me some secret information. Um, um, and so I'm going to also <laughs> switch over here. This is why, by the way, recording video tutorials is good of this stuff. Cause then I could just like keep everything in, but blur out or reset all the tokens afterwards. But live streaming is typical, difficult. Connect. By the way, I really have no idea what I'm doing here. And I, this might be completely overkill, but I've really been looking for a simple free database as a service cloud service. Um, and in my experience, I guess I'm still creating that cluster. So unfortunately we're, we're in this sort of like wait, waiting. So while we're waiting, <laughs> let's go um, back to here and um, in index, let's require, let's see, hold on. Um, let's go back to Gump. Oh, my cluster is complete. Of course this happens. So now I'm gonna click on this connect button, but I'm taking you away because I don't know what's gonna pop up. No, it still says it's, what? This is so weird. Didn't it just say it was finished? Now it's saying it's being created again. This is so bizarre. Um, all right, let me go back to here and uh, go to here. And I want to require MongoDB. So I know I need to um, add to my bot, require MongoDB. I need to say uh, npm install MongoDB. So I'm adding the MongoDB JavaScript thingy, the node package. Then uh, in, in the, to connect to the database, I'm gonna just connect, catch, I'm gonna just add this exact code, um, which will, oh, it should really be in the numbers. Yeah, I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? Well, so tricky here. Uh, right now I'm gonna assume, I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna make the assumption that this MongoDB is only for that number command. So I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna put it in here. And I think this kind of like connect to the database when it boots up thing will still happen if I put this just into the number file. Right, so, um, so I could have made a new database. I could have made a new database with a diff with the same cluster. Some I don't understand what the cluster is versus the database versus the collection. I've got to figure that out. <laughs> but let's just um, so I'm going to create a uh, a numbers DB, and uh, we'll call this numbers people. I don't know. Uh, numbers DB. I want to connect to, um, oh, and there's, uh, I want to just connect to that database. So let's see, I just want to successfully connect to this database. So back to the page that might have my, hopefully my secret connection stuff. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, it's definitely live. <laughs> now it's connected. Now I'm really going to hit this button. Collections, I need to, I don't understand. Can I use the same, I'm so confused. Someone will explain this to me. <laughs> but let me just click connect. Okay, allow access from anywhere. Uh, set up security, choose a connection method. Okay, the first user will have, keep credentials handy. Okay, so I, I can show this to you. So I'm gonna create a database user with allow access from anywhere, which is probably a little bit scary to do. And I'm gonna make a user called coding train. And then I am going to auto generate a secure password. I assume it's gonna let me regenerate one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna click that a bunch of times. Then um, I'm gonna hit create database user. Keep your credentials handy. All right, let me let me try to save that password. Uh, 
saving that password in my .env file right now. And then I'm gonna hide it. So now I can go back and I'm gonna hit create database user. Choose a connection method. Connect your app. So this is where, I don't remember which one I pick. I think it's connect your application. Oh, JavaScript interface? No. I think it must be this one. Yes. Okay, I shouldn't be showing this to you. <laughs> but at least I'm not showing you the use the password. But I think even this, like this cluster address, I probably should be keeping secret. But I'm going to copy this. Oh, look at this. And it gives me, this is definitely right, node.js. I could actually get a full driver code example, but I'm gonna copy this and I'm going to put this into um, my .env file. I'll show you in a second. So mongodb. Um, MongoDB, so I'm going to, I just want to zoom where the, the, and put this off the screen. So I, what I'm going to do is in my .env file, I'm putting MongoDB and I'm putting this, um, URL path. Oh, I'm showing you my tenor key. <laughs> I didn't realize my other key was there. Good job, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. And good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And... That's the end of today's code. We showed, it's 2.58 p.m. I showed you one of my API keys and we're done. Uh, uh, the cluster is a server. The server can have any amount of database. The database can have any amount of collections. So I should have done this a different way. Um, you know, have fun with my tenor key. I'm gonna just reset that pretty soon. So good luck, move fast people. I'm gonna do that right now. <laughs> um, let's see, tenor API key. I mean, I don't know what you could do with that. Uh, sign in. I'm, I'm resetting that API key. Really? I don't even know where, okay. Uh, it's gonna take me a while to find how I even logged into tenor in the first place. So I think that API key just lets you get gifts. So. Um, you know, all right. Uh, the funny thing is I seriously am done. <laughs> uh, the cluster is a virtual machine that runs the database. So I should have done this, right? It's three o'clock. So, you know, welcome to the new coding train where I just cut myself off at a certain time. Um, let me just talk about what my intention is to do next. Um, and if anybody wants to help, uh, contribute, I think I'm going to make a branch. So let me make a, let me, let me finish off by um, making a branch with what I've done so far. I'm just gonna close the .env file. Um, I'm going to here, so I'm going to um, here, I'm gonna go back to here. I'm gonna do git branch a number db, git checkout number db, um, git add git commit um, new code for random number db. So now that branch, I'll even make it like a draft pull. I'll show you something that's, that you can do. Um, so I can make this a draft pull request starting to work on a database of random numbers. Um, this this is for the coding train custom random number whistle project. And I should, um, I should link to this repo as well. And then I think I can do this, create draft pull request. So this isn't done, but the code, you can find it uh, if you wanna look at what I've done so far by going to this pull request and I am going to add that back into Discord under links. Um, I, and I'm gonna say goodbye. So I will continue to work on this. Uh, maybe I'll revisit it next week's live stream. Uh, maybe I'll just do it on my own or, or uh, uh, you know, some other contributors will add to it. Um, just as a reminder, um, as I wrap up here, um, 
you know, we did have some successes today by creating this sort of pretty interesting examples of this like whole collection of pendulums that are like upside down, swinging back and forth. I actually really think I want to leave this. This it's lovely, but I kind of really liked it with the lines. So I actually am going to change it back to the lines. So we can just remember what that looked like. Oh, take out the circles. Um, so we can see what that looks like with just the lines. So if you just joined recently, this is what I did earlier in today's live stream. Um, if you make a version of this, please share it with me. Right now, the best place we share it with me at Twitter, um, at Schiffman on Twitter. Um, I really want to encourage you, hopefully the next one will be out uh, later today or tomorrow. But I really want to encourage you to follow along with the new Nature of Code video tutorials. Um, add your uh, community contributions here. Uh, Lee Moore Daniel doesn't have to be the only person with community contributions. Add them here. And um, I really also want to remind you to um, check out the syllabus that I'm actively working on that I really welcome suggestions and pull requests um, here as well. So um, I'm going to put on this uh, goodbye song. <laughs> and um, just answer maybe one or two last questions from the chat. And then I'll be saying goodbye. And uh, bot testing is reopened. I think the, I should re-enable the glitch bot. So let's... Oh, it actually, it's not running. So let me put uh, the coding train bot back on. Um, do you speak, oh no, I'm just looking, socket servers, oh, people are talking about sockets and node. Um, and I'm just checking out the chat. Oh, there's not really too many questions there right now. Of course, you were all a little bit behind, so. Uh, oh, I didn't give the random numbers to our new members. So who are those new members? I'm scrolling up. Boy, there's a lot of chat. By the way, thank you to Marianne, 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 and Code Guppy for all of your support. It's very kind of you. Uh, we've got Amrani and Joseph. I didn't even read any random numbers today. Now we gotta get cracking. Um, and so, uh, so um, Amrani. Your random number that I just, ooh, this is cool because the first three numbers of it are the first three digits of pi. Well, not the first, yeah. I mean, if you count the three as a digit. Um, so from page 137, 6, 000, row 6,825, your number is 31,413, right? And then we could just set it in Discord. But can't do that yet. So you know, I might give people new random, you know, what's one random number versus another? And now for Joseph, Joseph. Ooh, this is kind of a cool random number from page 27, row 1,325, 88,890. That's your random number, Joseph. Thank you to Joseph and Amrani for joining. Um, I'm checking out the chat, which now I have scrolled all the way up. A six point snowflake generator. Why don't you make a playlist of all your live streams? So this is, oh, oh, I feel kind of sad about this. No, so I just need to do that. I really would like to have a nice solid playlist of all of my live streams well annotated. And it's just a lot of work to maintain and do that. So, um, if I can, um, you know, get somebody from the coding train team to allocate some time to work on that, or if somebody from the community wants to sort of volunteer to help with that, that's definitely something I would like to do. But it's, I'm just like, I fell so far behind and it's not something into my sort of weekly work practice of like going back to the live stream, adding time codes, adding a description, linking to all the things I talked about. Uh, but it would be so helpful for people to be able to go back and find things like even just that one little section about me coding the pendulum. So I would love help for that. Um, Abhe writes, you didn't see this one, Dan, but I'm not sure what that's referring to. A very auspicious number. I would agree. A very auspicious number. All right, everybody. 
Goodbye. Thank you again to uh, Curiosity Stream for uh, sponsoring today's uh, live stream. And I will see you all hopefully next week. Stay tuned for all of the new Nature of Code videos that are coming with to be released. Click the like and subscribe stuff. Don't you don't have to though. You really don't have to. I just thought it's a thing people say. I'm looking for the song that I'm gonna play. There it is. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song, this dot, this dot, this dot, never forget the this dot, this dot, this dot. This dot song. This dot. This dot. This dot. Never forget this dot. This dot. This dot. This dot. I'm gonna do this dot. This dot. I'm gonna do this. This dot. This dot. This dot. I'm gonna do this dot. This dot. I'm gonna do dot. This dot. This dot. This dot. I'm gonna do this dot. This dot. I'm gonna do this dot. This dot. This dot. I'm gonna do this dot. This dot. I'm gonna do this dot. This dot. This dot. This dot song. This dot. This dot. This dot, this dot, this dot, never forget the this dot. I'm gonna do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song, never forget the this dot. I'm gonna say once again, here we go. Sing it with me. It's the forward Cartesian coordinate song. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate song. Auto-tune and the internet will fix that for me. Sing it with me. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate song. 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 Unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. What else is there? Yes, kittens. Thank you very much. Kittens and rainbows and cupcakes. Notice that. Look what I get. I'm really losing my mind. Okay, let's do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens. just sort of like a nice feeling of relaxation. Everything's gonna be okay today. Dream is not broken, it has not frozen. This is a, this is a wonderful thing. Okay, we're gonna do it. I'm really getting to something. I need my sound effect. All right, it's gonna be dance break time soon. Unicorns and rainbows Here comes. cupcakes. What else is there? Unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. That was invalid syntax, I forgot. Uh, 
Uh, there was one other thing here that I think is important that I will use continuously over and over again. All sorts of text generation analysis things that I will use continuously over and over again. First thing I need to do is, yes, kittens, kittens, kittens. I'm really losing my mind. Okay, we're gonna do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens, 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 kittens and 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 kittens and